Hello, boils and ghouls. Welcome to Watchers Podcast with your hosts, Brad and Colson. <laughs> We all go a little mad sometimes. Hi, I'm Jackie. Wanna play? Why are you doing this to us? Gives you a home. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told it was nothing left. No reason. No uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of good or evil, of right or wrong. What's your favorite scary movie? Hey everybody, welcome to the show. My name is Brad, here with Colson Oliver. Hello. Colson, how are you doing today? Doing good, as always. <laughs> And yourself. I'm also doing good. That's good. Yeah. Um, how's everybody else doing that's listening? You're doing good? Great. All right. What a stupid opening. <laughs> um, what's new with you? Not a whole lot. Working. Yeah. Watching movies. Repeat. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's that time of year. Yeah. I don't know when... Everyone's going to be hearing this, but it's currently July. Yeah. And it's insane at work. That's crazy. <laughs> it's your worst time of year for you. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, definitely. June, July, August. Yeah. Starts to ease off a bit in September. Mm -hmm. And then October is when it really slows down. I don't know if it will this year, though, okay. with um, there not being as many restrictions and stuff like that. Yeah. With, covid yeah my work is definitely more busy in the summertime with mm -hmm. tourist shit like it's just people are here on vacation yeah so. you see like traffic and everything in the town like almost double yeah once summer hits it's crazy yeah <clears throat> um have you you said you've been watching movies uh what have you been watching well i watched uh Two that I'll talk two mini series which I okay I don't usually watch but I watched two of them yeah uh, I watched one called The Offer okay which is about the basically how The Godfather got made oh right so Never it's got that. Miles Teller um, he's kind of the main guy mm -hmm. the, I loved it I thought it was great they did do a lot of things that just didn't happen or couldn't have <laughs> happened. Um, the biggest example that I, that's not really a spoiler, but they're implying that he owed money to some mafia guy. Oh. And the guy's like, oh, you know, you got to pay me this money. And in the show, the money that he's going to pay him is either going to go to the, the mobster or to their trip to Sicily to finish the movie. And... It turns out that the mobster gets killed the night that he was going to give him the money. Oh, okay. But when you look it up, the guy died in April of 72, and the Godfather came out in March of 72. Uh -huh. <laughs> so how the hell... They would have been shooting this in 71. Yeah. It just... You know, they take liberties like that. Like, just to add that dramatic yeah. flair to it that they, <clears throat> they don't really need, mm -hmm. but it... it whatever but it was still good I, I loved it i thought characters were great uh fun to watch they all did really good um looked a lot like you know it's tough when you're casting al pacino and marlon brando right but they cast perfect uh people for them <laughs> cool uh yeah so i watched that and the other one i watched was the stand oh yeah which the original not the new one oh, okay um, i need to watch that yeah it was it was good it wasn't great. It was definitely very 90s mm -hmm. TV um, feel to it, TV movie. Um, yeah. It was, it was fine. Gary, uh, Gary Sinise, is that his name? Yeah. Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. Yes. I think it's Gary. Anyway, he's the main guy. 
Uh, Molly Ringwald is in it. Um, oh, cool. Rob Lowe. Big cast, full cast, uh, cool story. Watching it made me want to get the new one mm -hmm. just to see. The new one's also like two hours longer, I think. Oh, wow. So they probably packed in a bit more from the original book or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a good watch. It was fun. Nice. I think, I wonder if they do that now, like with um, putting more stuff in from the book. It's like, eh, people are weirder now. Like we yeah. can get away with that kind of <laughs> That's stuff. That's right. Where back then, if they had put it in the movie or the show, it'd be like, what the fuck is yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's what I. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. Nice. Did you watch anything? Um, I also watched a show. Okay. Uh, Stranger Things. Ah. Finished up the second half of season four. Nice. Very good. Um, might be my favorite season since season one. Really like the bad guy. Really like the feel of the whole season. It feels very. <laughs> Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street okay. esque, so it was great. Now, when you say your favorite season <clears throat> or whatever, is that season four, all of it, or season four, part two specifically? Um, I'd say all of it. How long is? I haven't I haven't watched it yet. It is gonna be coming up for me. Yeah, but I haven't got to it yet. So, is the second part like four episodes or? It's two episodes. Two episodes, okay. The first one, I think, was an hour and a half. Okay. And the second one was two and a half hours. Oh, shit. So, it's like movies. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, by the end of it, you're like, this is awesome. Okay. <laughs> like, it's really, really good. I'm excited. Yeah. It's funny, though. I've noticed in that <laughs> show... Have you... You've watched... I've watched season one and two. Okay. I haven't done three or four yet. Okay. I noticed in the later seasons, they do this thing where they split everybody up. Okay. I think they do it a little bit in season two yeah. with Eleven. Yeah. She's kind of on her own. Yeah. But they'll split everybody up, and then by the last episode, they find a way to bring everyone back together okay. for the big final... Showdown. Showdown type <laughs> thing. Yeah. Right on. It seems like very convenient that they do it every season, but yeah. it's still good. Okay. My, yeah, my kids are watching it right now, so they're watching... They're into season two now, so once they're caught up to me, mm -hmm. then we'll watch it all together. Yeah. So it should be done over the next month or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. And season three and four are definitely better than two, I think. Okay. Yeah, two, that's kind of why I didn't watch three, is because I was kind of burnt out. Same thing happened mm -hmm. to me with American Horror Story. I got to a mm -hmm. certain point, and I was like, ugh. Yeah. Enough of this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm excited, though. Yeah, I hear that's... nothing but good shit about season four, so. Yeah. Well, season two wasn't supposed to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it was supposed to be like American Horror Story, like a different right. thing different each thing season. Every, yeah. But then it just got too popular, so yeah. we were like, well, <laughs> we better make that money. Yeah, that's the right. The whole Halloween <laughs> that's right. theory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's. Pretty much all I watched. Okay. Uh, haven't had a ton of time, so... I hear you. Getting that done was even a chore yeah. over a few days. <laughs> My wife and I right now are on different schedules, too. She's kind of like you guys. Yeah. Uh, she's working nights and stuff like that. Right. So we usually watch whatever it is together and mm -hmm. just haven't been doing it. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. But I did also watch the movie we're going to talk about today. Perfect. Fire in the Sky, directed by Robert Lieberman. Yeah. Uh, made in 1993. Has 6.5 on IMDb. Yeah. Coulson. Do a rundown. Yeah. Um, an Arizona logger mysteriously disappears for five days in an alleged encounter with a flying saucer in 1975. <clears throat> His co-workers endure ridicule. And contempt as they are wrong, wrongly accused of murder. Yeah. Uh, hour and 49 minutes, and we will be spoiling this movie. Yeah. Um, Came out in 1993. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you were like me and haven't seen it till <laughs> now, then that's your fault. And uh, the cast, as for cast, <laughs> we have D.B. Sweeney plays Travis. Robert Patrick, Mike, plays Mike. Uh, Craig Sheffer plays Alan. Peter Berg plays David. Henry Thomas plays Greg, Bradley Gregg plays Bobby, and James Garner 
as Lieutenant Waters. Yeah. Some of the cast is definitely known. I mean, you know Robert Patrick, you know Peter Berg, uh, Henry, Henry Thomas, Thomas from Young E.T. Yeah, th- I thought this was a sequel to E.T. Yeah. Uh, what a surprise <laughs> exactly. when I got into this. <laughs> kind of funny that he did this movie, um, you know, 93. E.T. came out in 81, I think, or 82. Mm. So, uh, yeah, he just... Ten years later, and he's yeah. back at it. <laughs> um, so this is a first time watch for you. Second time for me. I haven't seen this movie in like fifteen years, maybe okay. 10, 10 or fifteen years. Um, now we should mention too that we're releasing this. Like you said, this is July, mm-hmm. but this is, episode isn't coming out until November. Yeah, actually, the day we are right now, as you're hearing this, if you're listening on Sunday, the day. After the, what is it, 40 f- or 55 years, whatever the hell it is, from 1975 till now, 40, 53? I don't know. I'm not a calculator. I'll do the math after. Yeah. Anyway, it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> the day after. <clears throat> the uh, day the after it actually happened. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's funny because we didn't plan it that way. No. We've just been like... <clears throat> recording episodes and stacking them up yeah so we have a library to put out yeah and it was like hey you want to do this movie yeah sure and then once you looked into it 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 ended up being yeah november coincidence this is november 6th and this happened on november 5th 1975 so we are november 6th of 2022 this is colson and brad from the future that's right (laughs) um yeah so first time watch for you I'm interested to hear uh, what you thought of it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not exactly as I remembered it, mm-hmm. but I still, spoiler alert for the end of this, I still enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Opening of the movie uh, is a truck just, I, I like it. It's a truck Flying. rushing through these woods. Yeah. Uh, they get to a bar and they all are terrified. You can just tell the look on their face something yeah. happened. I love the location yeah. in this movie. It's great. It is. <laughs> Once it started, it felt very, very um, almost Twin Peaks. Right. Like it had that same feel. Yeah. Obviously, it's not quite the same thing, but there was something about it like it's creepy, but also kind of comforting. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I really like it. Well, in my memory, when I was talking to you, because Scream Factory just released this about a month or two ago, mm-hmm. um, and I bought it, and uh, I remember telling I think we may have even talked about it in the top 10 alien movies or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was like the Oregon area, yeah. Washington or Oregon, because... You, I don't know about you, but I hear Arizona, I think of like cactus and Deserts. desert. Yep, me too. <laughs> Not this, and it's such a nice, beautiful uh, part of Arizona. Yeah, um, didn't know it existed. Yeah, me either. But uh, there's a great scene with James Gardner. Gardner. Is that his name? James, James Garner. Gardner. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, as he pulls up to, he, he, he pulls up to a, we don't know what it is, and then we see these these red lights yeah. rush over his windshield and you think, holy shit, it's a UFO, but it's just train lights. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a cool scene to that throw in there. Um, and I do like the, the setup. We don't really know what happened and they're kind of setting it up like they did murder this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that idea. Yeah. There's some real good mystery to this movie. Yeah. Going into it, I knew about the alien scene right but other than that i was pretty much like yeah i don't really know what's going on Mm -hmm. i thought the scene where they show up in the truck and you see all the red light yeah and they do a really good job of that part yeah he just kind of like jumps out and runs to it yeah i was like okay this guy's about to get abducted yeah but then he just drops yeah that's right i was like okay now i have no idea what's going on yeah i didn't know there was going to be like a whole Basically, like a murder investigation right, part yeah, to this yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they do a really good job of being like, did they kill him? Like, yeah, it's it's yeah, definitely. Uh, James Garner is he's not from there. He's kind of brought in um, to kind of pressure these to get the story out, and they're all telling the same story. They all, and even to this day, as far as I know, they all continue to tell this story yeah 
Um, and there was six characters in the movie, right? But there was actually seven, seven in the real, yes, in the real story. So, uh, Travis Walton is the the man who was abducted. Mm-hmm. He went on Joe Rogan's podcast. I was going to ask you about this. <laughs> so, did you, you listen to it? Uh, I've listened to it. I remember listening to it when it came out. Okay. Uh, I did go back on YouTube and watch a couple of clips right. just to refresh. But... Yeah, yeah. I, I happened to listen to it when I mowed the lawn. Um, I was like, fuck, perfect time. I got a couple mm-hmm. hours, so I'll, I'll throw it in. And yeah, he talks about the movie. That's the, basically all they talked about was his story. Yeah. I mean, for Rogan, a lot of times they'll get a specific person on and three hours, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, this it's like, was... It's like, oh, I can't wait to hear about yeah. this guy that was abducted by aliens. And then you got to listen to kettlebells exactly. and elk meat and <laughs> stand-up yeah. comedy before you get That's to it. That's right. And this one this one stuck pretty well the whole time to that topic. Yeah. Um, so I was excited about that. Listening to him talk about it mm-hmm. on Rogan yeah. made me believe him less. Okay. <laughs> um. There were a few things that I felt the exact same way. Yeah. Because at first, when he's describing it, and he's like... Because in the movie, it's a big glowing red light. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's this color you can't really explain. It's kind of like gold and shimmering. Yeah. It's like, it's like bright but dull. I'm like, okay, that's that seems reasonable. Like, right. they're not from here. It's a new color you've never seen before. So right. Like, <laughs> then he starts talking about his brother... And he's like, yeah, I knew my brother would believe me because he has seen aliens. Yes. And we've both seen multiple aliens. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm out. Yeah. That's what killed it for The me. same thing with me. Um, and the, even on his Wikipedia page, <clears throat> the sheriff or whatever of that county had said, but the, you know, as I, I talked to my wife about it too, I don't know if the sheriff just, maybe he doesn't like the guy, so he's yeah. saying this, you know, but... There's a quote in the Wikipedia thing that the sheriff said that the mother, brother, and Travis are all alien-obsessed people before this even happened. Right. They were they were deep in it. Uh, and what comes to mind is the Bigfoot, P- Patterson or whatever yeah. his name was. I'm going to look for Bigfoot. And he just so happens to find Bigfoot. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh boy, you, you, yeah. you get these people who are too obsessed with it and then well this happens it's like uh i and here's the other thing this happened then they write a book about it mm-hmm. then they get the movie deal yeah. <laughs> um i had just been listening to another podcast about a month ago maybe mm-hmm. called deep cuts okay i might not get all of this completely factually correct but it was basically what the Warrens did from okay. The Conjuring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was their thing. They would, they had all these stories. They would go to these places and they would end up uh, writing books about it. Right. Then it would become a movie or mm-hmm. like later on it became movies, but they were making money off these books from these scary places they were going. Right. So it kind of felt like that when I was watching it. I'm like... Did these guys all go in on this? Yeah. And be like, okay, here's the story. This is what happened. You go missing for a few days. Yeah. Like, and then... So, uh, my wife and I, we watched it. We talked about that as well. Yeah. Because I said to her, like, okay, so just throw the theory out there. Travis, go hide out for five days. Yeah. What happens? What's going to be their plan if Travis is walking through the woods, trips, and hits his head? And he dies. They find the body and he's got a wound to his head. You five or six or whatever killed him. Now you're going to prison. Oh, it was a hoax. We were just joking. He must have tripped. Bullshit. You're all going to prison for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there are risks in the fact of just hide out for five days. I bet they didn't even think of that. Maybe not. <laughs> That's probably where my like, brain goes. We'll I jump in the truck. We'll drop you off at a motel. <laughs> Maybe. And... Uh... But strip down and hide behind the ice machine. Like how that. do you explain lie detector test passing according according to the Wikipedia page, mm-hmm. or maybe it was something else that I had read? These tests weren't exactly done by the best of the best. Yeah, 
but according to him on Rogan, they were. Yeah. Now, in not the movie, all of them. They say, "Oh, he's the best." Yes. Yeah. Um, but there, there was like six tests or something like that, and I do believe that a couple of them were done by police people. Yeah. But there were like three or four that were done by like that shitty magazine that has like woman gives birth things or whatever those were oh, from like the, the, the exam- National Enquirer. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Um, so they, they maybe want this story to be, you know, yeah. oh, you're, you know, so who knows, but they did, as far as I know, pass a couple police ones. Yeah. So how do you explain that? I don't know. Yeah. They can be beaten, but six or seven people, whatever there were in real- reality, how, how do all of them do it? Yeah, that's true. It is tough, right? Yeah. But, uh, interesting. And... I don't really remember what kind of shape he was in when they found him. Like, he had to go to the hospital. Yeah. Did they ever say, like, what was wrong? No. Um, in the Now, that was another thing. There there are inconsistencies, as you'd expect, with movie to reality or assuming reality. Mm-hmm. But, like, he he said that in on Rogan's show, he said that he was fully clothed. Mm. But in the movie, they find him, he's naked. Yeah. Now, being naked makes more sense, I I think. But yeah, I don't what know. do I know? <laughs> it just, I don't know. They, but yeah, he was, and um, Rogan even asked him not to be crude, but did you have to take a shit? And he was like, uh, I, I don't remember. Like, it wasn't a thing, so I guess it, I did. Like, you know, he was kind of saying, like, he wasn't not having to go. But yeah. It wasn't like he was urgently going. So... That implies that he was eating or something for those five days or, you know. Yeah. Uh, his biggest thing was he was dehydrated in real life. Yeah. And in the movie, they make it seem like, I don't know, he was just kind of crazy huddled up by an ice machine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know exactly what medical things he had wrong, but uh, uh, they are different from movie to the but that scene when they do find him that creeped me out like they're driving looking for him because he got a phone call and they see him and they go over and he's just like he's shaking naked and it's just it it's creepy yeah the lighting and everything in that like they just have the headlights on him that's right (laughs) it looks really creepy um now in the movie they throw him a welcome home party hmm might be the worst idea ever for somebody who has... You see this in all movies, like when soldiers come home or whatever, that's like, yeah. hey, and surprise, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Pop champagne. <laughs> exactly. Just not the brightest thing. Yeah. And in that scene, he is hiding under the table at one point, and this yeah. maple syrup falls, and it drips on him, and then he starts having flashbacks of what the hell happened. Yeah. And I believe when he wakes up from what we're seeing of his flashback, he's in a hypno... Uh, yeah, whatever those... Yeah, they're hypnotizing. Yes. Him. Now, according to him on Rogan, we're going to be jumping around here a little bit, but yeah. he was saying that that is where that story came from. And Rogan kind of pointed out, like, eh, that's kind of how some people get stories planted in their head. Yeah. And uh, he was like, I don't think that's the case with me, of course. Yeah. But you never know. Not the first time I've seen... People being hypnotized over alien abductions either. Right. That fourth Kind uh-huh. movie deals with that as well. It does. Also very creepy. Yes. <laughs> um, the ship scene itself, when he is in that ship, mm-hmm. uh, th- th- that, as far as I can tell, is completely off from what he, he had said. I'm not going to yeah. go over everything he said. If you want to listen, it's episode 1597 of the Joe Rogan Experience, so you can go back and listen to it on spotify yeah or uh yeah it's spotify only i guess but that scene made like he wakes up in a pod Mm. with like gelatin shit yeah he breaks out of it great effects for a tv uh or a 1993 movie yeah where he's kind of floating around that like you can't see wires at all there are a couple scenes where maybe you see the shirt a little bit but for the most part it's really it looks great but there's a scene there where he breaks through another one, and there's another. There's a guy in there, and his, he his arms go through the guy's stomach. Yeah, and it's like he's like rotten, fucking horrible. Yeah, it's disgusting. But um, yeah, very gross. Oh. Gross to watch. 
The actual scene where they operate on him. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) It's disgusting. Yeah. They, yeah, they have tools and they, there's goop. Yeah. And there's like a skin they put over. It looks like a big long, like a giant latex sheet that covers the whole body. That's right. But then it like suctions right to him. (laughs) And he's like screaming and it's like sucked into his face and all around his mouth. Yep. And then they just have that one spot around his eye and yeah. the mouth open. Yeah. And they like shove the tube in yeah. and I'm watching and I'm like you see the needle, the needle. like from the needle point of view exactly going towards his eye yeah. and I'm like fuck no. <laughs> Brutal. It's so bad. Yeah, very uh yeah. It and it just that whole scene just sort of comes out of nowhere cuz mm-hmm. the rest of it's all police investigation stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like oh, here's what happened to him and That's right. I wasn't completely ready for it even though i knew it was in the movie right yeah yeah no i i know what you're saying um did you like the look of the aliens in the movie i thought they were fine yeah um yeah they the, were fine because at one point he sees it, what turns out to be a, a space suit mm-hmm. and then we see the actual aliens i don't know it's hard to explain they are puppets or whatever or people in makeup whatever they use yeah which I like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, not exactly what I had imagined. No. But I, I'm i not complaining either. Yeah. Um, it's weird that they kept some people to rot or, like, let him go. I know. Is it just because he That's was making I, a mess? It's, or? Very, <laughs> it's very strange. He's causing fucking chaos there, so they just boot him out. Yeah. They figure if we put him back in the pod, he'll, he'll break out again. Yeah. Um, like, just put this guy back on Earth and let him wreck things down there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, jumping back, I do like the scene where we see the what is the fire in the sky. As mm-hmm. they're driving, we see their, their what actually happened. It actually might be after that scene. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, it's just a red glow mm-hmm. over the hill. And as they get closer and closer, it's they think it's a forest fire maybe yeah. or whatever. And, um, yeah, I thought that looked good. Yeah, me too. The ship itself is whatever. It's a 93 movie. Yeah, and it. sounds kind of similar to what he described. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I liked, uh, I liked that that whole... And I, I also... <laughs> I love the fact that they leave him. <laughs> yeah. They... they, they he, he, I think he gets hit with the the beam yeah. and falls backwards, and they just are like, "Fuck this!" Yeah, they're, they're just like, "He's dead," <laughs> and they're gone. And the one guy in the back <clears throat> in the back of the truck rolls the window up, yeah. which might be the best thing I've ever seen. He's just so scared, he rolls yeah. the window up, um, and they uh, they leave him there, which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, I think if that happened, I would try and grab him first. Yeah, and get out of there. Actually, I think he mentions on Rogan that that. That they never... Oh, no, no. What it was, they left him. Mm -hmm. But in the movie, only Mike goes back. Yeah. In reality, all of them went back. None of them wanted to... Because when that happened, my wife looked at me and was like, "Uh, only the one guy's going back. Yeah. And it happens to be his best friend and future brother-in-law. Yeah. And in reality, all of them. So I don't know why they changed things like that, but they did. Yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess maybe to put that in your head, like, yeah. was in hers. But um, all all guys went back because none of them wanted to be left alone. <laughs> um, now, on Rogan, he also mentioned there is a remake being discussed. Um, yeah. I, would you be okay with a remake? I'd be okay with a remake. Yeah, I would too. Um, this movie's good. Yeah. But if they're going to redo it... And add more of his actual story to it. It yeah, could be good. Keep keep it closer to his story. Yeah. Rather than fraying away. There, there are things that they changed that I don't really know why they did. Yeah. And Maybe. I'm sure he wants some money. Like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. It was 93. He's probably spent most of yeah. his fire in the sky money. That's right. Um, yeah. That's all I have for notes. So I don't think I have anything else. Do you have anything? No. Nothing else? Uh, So I'll just... I got one more wrap-up thing. 
over the course of this show, not just this episode, but the show, we've talked about aliens and things like that. I mm-hmm. want, I'm the molder. I want to believe you're the yeah. X-Files thing. Um, I just don't know if I, I want to believe this guy's story so bad. Same. Uh, I like the, as we mentioned, I like the, the taking the tests and passing them. And I like the fact that it has been, um, 47 years or whatever mm-hmm. and they all are still saying that this happened none yeah. of them are, are nobody's not said it exactly um yeah so that's that's i just i want to believe yeah me too the setting <clears throat> makes sense yeah like i feel like these aliens were probably not expecting someone to show up yeah. in the woods in Arizona when they were doing whatever they were doing there. Whatever they're doing. Maybe one of them had to stop for a pee break or yeah. something. And they're, and they're like, oh shit, now we got to deal with this guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to believe. Yeah. Yeah. It, it has to be real, right? I hope. I hope. Me too. I hope it's not just an elaborate story. I know. Yeah. But, Yeah. Well, I guess maybe we'll find out in our lifetime. Who knows? But yeah. For now, I, I I I'm choosing to believe this one. I I, I like it. I I think it's believable enough. Me too. Um. Yeah. So, it's not a horror movie, but spooky, scary, terrifying. Um. I go scary. Yeah. Yeah. It is scary. Yeah. I just. It has that those moments where, you kind of get the goosebumps and certain scenes yeah for um, sure. yeah well done movie though yeah no yeah. kills no except that one guy that's already dead that's right punches <laughs> through his guts yeah like mortal combat <laughs> yes uh ratings yeah do you want me to go you go first i give it I, i'll go with seven and a half okay yeah i'm gonna go seven okay it's yeah it's a solid movie uh, going in on a rewatch that might get higher. Okay. Because going into it, I thought there was going to be a lot more alien stuff. Right. Uh, I don't know why, because if it's based on a true story, there's probably only going to be the one incident. Right. But yeah, I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, I will also mention the 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 cover art for this movie that for that uh, yeah. Screen Factory did. I love it. Beautiful. Yeah, this is a guy getting kind of sucked up into the light. Looks really yeah. cool um yeah great movie yeah fun fun watch yeah um if you guys have seen this one let us know in the comments what you thought of fire in the sky uh also i want adele to do a version of uh, a song for this like what's that one rolling in the deep there's a fire burning in my heart or whatever yeah but i want it burning in the sky there you go Yeah. All right. Lame joke to end the show. Bye.